What makes a pretzel a pretzel is that shiny dark brown crust on the outside has a really unique flavor. It's kind of bitter, very pretzel-like. Without it, all you have really is just a fancy folded bread roll. So let's science out the crust of a pretzel. I'm gonna show you how to make a super tasty soft pretzel dough and six different finishes for baked homemade soft pretzels. Each finish or crust will have a different color and texture based on the type of bath we give our pretzel babies. Yes, we'll be bathing our pretzels in some not so soothing baths of various liquids. And at the end of the video, you'll be a homemade soft pretzel connoisseur and be able to decide which technique is best for you and your pretzel. So first up, we need some soft pretzel dough. And to make this yeasted dough, we're gonna add some warm water, about about 110 to 115 degrees Fahrenheit, white granulated sugar and yeast to a large mixing bowl. This is a bowl of my stand mixer, but you can make this dough by hand too if you like. Then you'll leave this for about five minutes. The reason that we do this step first is to make sure that our yeast is viable or alive. It's not a necessary step if you already know your yeast is good as you can add your yeast granules straight up to your dough and proceed with the recipe. We just woke up our yeasty friends by providing them with a warm environment in the form of warm water and gave them food in the form of sugar. The yeast metabolizes that sugar or eats it, and the byproduct of that metabolism comes in the form of carbon dioxide, which is that foaming action that you'll see on the top. And in addition to that, you'll smell a bit of alcohol because ethanol is also a byproduct of that metabolism. Now to that same bowl, add some bread or all-purpose flour, melted unsalted butter, diastatic malt powder, and salt. Then I use the bread hook and my hands to kind of mix it into a shaggy ball and let this go on my mixer on the four setting for about 10 minutes. After about 10 minutes, either by the machine or by hand, the dough is going to feel smooth and only just mildly sticky. When you do a window pane test, you might see some breakage because of the high butter content. That's completely normal. But you should see kind of strands or layers of gluten like this. They kind of look like thin rubber layers on top of each other pulling apart. That's what's going to give us that soft cotton candy like interior for a baked pretzel. I then poured a bit of canola oil inside that same bowl to cover the interior surface of the bowl and ball of dough so it doesn't stick while rising. We're gonna cover this bowl with a damp towel and allow it to rise until it's doubled in size. I have a proofing setting on my oven and at 85 degrees Fahrenheit, this took approximately one hour. Okay, now I'm just preparing my pans for my pretzels, spraying it with a little bit of canola oil and spreading it around so the pretzels don't stick. So it's been an hour and here's what the dough looks like when it's fully risen. See how when I poke it, it doesn't bounce back and it leaves an indentation? That means the yeast has been busy in there, metabolizing the carbs from the flour and white sugar, producing carbon dioxide gas and pushing that gluten network to capacity, which is a good thing. So I remove the dough onto my counter and it's got enough butter in there that it shouldn't really stick to your countertop. But if you want, you can dust it with a little bit of flour, though it shouldn't really need it. Now I'm going to portion out my dough. One of my recipes makes about 900 grams of dough, so it should make 10 nicely sized pretzels using 90 gram dough balls. But you can also eyeball this if you want. And I like to lay plastic wrap on top of the little rounds until I'm ready to roll them out so they don't don't dry out. Okay, for the famous pretzel shape, you're gonna take a ball of dough and start rolling it into a hot dog, kind of. Then I take a ruler and measure out two feet on my countertop because we wanna create a long rope that's a little over two feet long. And once you have that, you're gonna make a U shape and then twist the two legs twice over each other, then pull down those legs over the base of the U shape. And to pick up the pretzel and move it to the baking sheet, you can hold the pretzel by the base along with the two ends like this and transfer them over. There is a much quicker way to fold pretzels, which my nephew has shown me. He worked at the pretzel shop in the mall, you know, that famous one. He does it really quickly in the middle of the air almost, but I'm still really bad at it, so I'm not even gonna pretend to show you guys how to do it. Okay, once your pretzels have been folded, you're gonna let them proof again for about 30 minutes in that same warm spot, but this time uncovered so they dry out a bit on the surface. And this is what they look like after that proofing step. They're a little bit poofier and they bounce back when poked. Okay, we have all our pretzels, so let's start the experiment. I'll show you five different finishes for the pretzels plus a plain control pretzel. Just so we're consistent, each pretzel is sprinkled with some coarse salt and baked at 425 degrees Fahrenheit for 10 minutes. I'm going to be doing the pretzel types in pairs so I can work faster. Now before anything, we have to establish our control, which is pretzel number one. And our control just serves as a baseline to compare everything to, so it's just gonna be a pretzel with no wash or bath. Pretzel number two received an egg wash prior to baking, which is just egg yolk with a bit of water to thin it out, brushed atop the surface of the 
pretzel. Pretzel one, the control on the bottom, baked up like a fancy dinner roll with a matte tan colored surface. Pretzel two on the top, the egg wash had a nice glossy finish with a slightly darker crust. Now we're going to move into the alkaline baths or trying to get that browner crust. And this is pretzel number three, which is going to bathe in room temperature water with baking soda added. Basic or alkaline environments speed up what's known as the Maillard reaction. It takes place between proteins and sugars in food. This reaction is what gives us a beautiful brown crust as well as complexity and flavor. And the higher the pH or the more alkaline a solution is, the faster that this will occur. So most pretzel bathing solutions are around three to 8% with the higher percentages usually being used for baking soda baths. The browning will also depend on the length of time that you're soaking your pretzels. I'm going to use an 8% baking soda solution with 30 second soakings. And the rule of thumb I use here is about one fourth cup of baking soda per four cups of water. So I whisk to dissolve that baking soda and the final pH of this solution came out to 7.9. I'm gonna dip three pretzels in this solution for a total of 30 seconds, flipping in the middle. Then you wanna use a slotted spoon to thoroughly drain before placing it on parchment paper. Pretzel number four is probably the most popular type of preparation for home pretzel makers and it's boiling water with baking soda added. I wanted to see the difference that boiling water had on the surface of the pretzels. So this is still an 8% baking soda solution, just like we did for pretzel number three. We're just gonna add it into boiling water instead of room temp water. You'll want a wide pot or a saucepan so that you can float a few pretzels in there at once. And I filled mine with about eight cups of water here. I added one half cup of baking soda. You just wanna be careful when you pour the baking soda in and to do it very slowly. The heat breaks the baking soda down and by doing so produces carbon dioxide gas. It bubbles quite a bit. You don't wanna make a mess or even worse, burn yourself during this process. You may need to whisk a little, but once the water is clear, you're good to go. I went ahead and dipped three more pretzels in this bath for a total of 30 seconds, flipping in the middle. We've got a golden, almost yellowish matte crust for the threes and a darker mahogany brown crust for the number four is the hot water bath. Pretzel number five uses baked baking soda. So this is one cup of regular baking soda that I placed on a foil lined sheet and into a 350 degree oven for one and a half hours. This idea comes from food scientist Harold McGee and what's happening is that the heat is transforming our baking soda or sodium bicarbonate into sodium carbonate and that has a higher pH. It's gonna weigh about one third less after it's done baking due to the loss of water from this reaction and it'll look a little drier and have this clean smell which is why it's also referred to as washing soda. So the theory here is that by doing this simple heating step we've increased the pH of our solution. I dipped three pretzels in for 30 seconds total flipping once during this time and then allowing them to drain fully which I was trying to do on this wire rack here. It ended up being kind of messy and I had to handle the dough too many times times before placing it on the sheet so the pretzels look kind of mangled. Our final and sixth pretzel is how pretzels are traditionally made and is definitely the most advanced, but I'm gonna walk you through every step. We're gonna create a super alkaline solution using sodium hydroxide or food grade lye. So this is a disclaimer. This stuff is extremely caustic. Keep it away from children, away from pets, and just take general safety concerns for yourself. It can cause skin burns and eye burns. The solution that we're gonna be working with though is pretty dilute or weak, but I still take all safety precautions. I love pretzels, but I love my eyes even more. So I have nitrile gloves, long sleeves for skin protection of my arms and eye protection in the form of goggles. I also line my countertop with plastic garbage bags in case of a spill. So the first thing I'm going to do is weigh out my sodium hydroxide and we're going for a 4% solution. So that's 21 grams. That's going into 500 grams or about two cups of cold water. And very important, I still remember this from high school and I carried it all the way to grad school. Do as you oughta, always add acid into water the same thing applies to the base. So we're always adding the base into the water and never the other way around. And here's the reason why. It's an extremely exothermic reaction, meaning it generates a lot of heat. So if you try to add the water to the sodium hydroxide, it can splatter and that can be dangerous. Actually, you can check the exothermic reaction when you do it correctly. Put your hands on the bowl. You'll notice that it's a little bit warm. Okay, and we're gonna do the same thing with the pretzels. I'm just gonna do them one at a time because my bowl is really small and I'm gonna do it for 30 seconds, flipping once. Now to dispose of your lye solution, you can check with your local waste management facility, but according to King Arthur Baking, our solution is generally so dilute that you can dump it down your kitchen sink followed by a flush of cold tap water. And I'll link to that article down below. And here are the finished pretzels. The top row and the middle left are the lye solution pretzels with a super dark mahogany finish. And the bottom row and middle right are the 
washing soda pretzels with an orangey gold finish. So which pretzel would you choose to make? They all had a wonderfully cottony soft interior, so based on that observation alone, they're all delicious. But let me help you decide. I like to do this when presented with a decision or set of data I can't make sense of. So on the x-axis, we have the ease of making the pretzels in terms of the wash process only. And on the y-axis, we have pretzel on top, meaning the best pretzel in terms of color, which equates to a good taste and texture of the crust. Then it goes all the way down to bread roll, which is a pale roll that is not very pretzel-esque in terms of color. It's just a bread roll, which is good, but it's not what you would call a pretzel. Okay, first up is pretzel one, which is our control. Pretty pale, no alkaline outer crust at all. Really just a bread roll, right? There's no wash. So this has to be the easiest and that roll belongs right here. Two was the egg wash pretzel. Really just a glorified bread roll, right? It's got a sheen on it, but the brown crust is similar to the control and it has no alkaline crust flavor. We're gonna back it up a tad from the control in terms of ease since we did have to make an egg wash for it, but even then it's not really hard to do. Pretzel three was the room temperature baking soda pretzel. This one sort of had an orange cast to it, almost like it wanted to start browning in the oven, but didn't quite get there. The alkaline taste was very light on the surface and we'll keep this one on the easy side since it really wasn't that hard to whisk some baking soda into water. Pretzel four was the boiling water baking soda bath. We had to make a pot of boiling water and then pour in some baking soda and make sure it didn't bubble over. So a touch more work, but overall not too hard. The browning on this one was pretty good. When I tasted it, there was definitely a pretzely taste to that crust, so kind of alkaline. We're gonna kick this one higher up on the pretzel axis for sure because of the color and the taste. Pretzel five was the boiling water baked baking soda bath. I wouldn't say this one was difficult, but it was an extra step to bake the baking soda on a pan for an hour and a half. For that extra step, we'll say it's a little bit more difficult. The results were nice. Interestingly, these pretzels were not as brown as pretzel four, even though it had a higher pH than the solution for pretzel four. I'm not sure about this. It could have been a user error, just something to note. And pretzel six is the holy grail of pretzel taste. This one goes to the top in terms of pretzelness, super alkaline, chewy outer crust. In fact, let me show you the high pH completely gelatinized the outer crust of these pretzels so that when they baked, it almost had a leathery texture to it that I was unable to get with any of the other pretzels. Taste was fantastic and you saw the process. It's definitely a little bit more difficult, perhaps unfamiliar to some. So this will have to go all the way to the left in terms of difficulty. So I think for me, if I'm just looking for lazy pretzels, I'd go for number four or the baking soda boiling water bath, which was pretty good compared to the gold standard of six with far less effort. But honestly, now that I know how to do number six, the authentic lie bath. I'd definitely make this one if I were trying to impress or was just craving the best homemade pretzel.